I want you to start thinking about the legacy that you might leave behind you at university. Now that might sound like I'm getting ahead of myself, and that for you guys, before you've even arrived at university, you don't need to be thinking about what will be following you after. But actually, and I'm hoping you're going to realise over the course of this video, that it's something that is really good for you to be aware of before you even step onto campus. I've asked a lot of young people now to tell me some people who left particular legacies behind and they come out with answers like Martin Luther King or Nelson Mandela or Winston Churchill. And those people absolutely have all left legacies behind them. Things were different after they left than the position in which they found it. And the same can be true for you at university. Uh, I went to university at the University of East Anglia, UEA, between 2015 and 2018. And while I was there, I met some incredible people. And some of my best friends, some of the people I'm lucky to call my best friends, left the most extraordinary legacies behind them at university. And I want to tell you about them today. And my hope is, is that you can see the legacies that they left behind and to maybe put yourselves in their shoes and think, hey, yeah, that could be me. I could do that. I want to start by talking to you about a serving legacy. I had a friend called Jacinta at university, great name. And Jacinta was unlike anyone I'd ever met. She served everyone. I remember sitting in my bedroom one day, um, one evening actually, I was watching Netflix and then I get a knock at the door. Just sitting, I lived in the block of flats next to me and I opened the door and all of a sudden she stood there holding this basket of muffins that she has just baked apparently for me. And it wasn't just her friends that she treated like that. It was everyone she knew in her flat. They were, they, I remember her flat were notorious for not doing their washing up and leaving it lying around. And Jacinta just used to say, absolutely fine, no worries, roll the sleeves up and just do everyone's washing up because she wanted to serve them. I remember another lad in her flat, when he broke his foot, she went along to uh, the accident and emergency department of the local hospital with him and sat with him for about six hours before he could be seen. And Jacinta didn't choose to do this because she wanted to be, just be really nice for the sake of it, but she knew that there was something about the character of Jesus that meant that she wanted to serve the people around her. There's a passage in the Bible from Galatians 5, 13, and it says this, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, but rather serve one another humbly in love. She wasn't doing it for recognition, but she was doing it because she loved them deeply. Could that be you? Could you serve the people you met? on campus because as Jacinta did that everyone that she came across was impacted by the way that she said whether or not they knew Jesus they were impacted and then in all the um, interactions that those other people would have with their own mates they're carrying something of what Jacinta has loved them with and that is how you leave a legacy on a campus another legacy you could leave behind is prayer one of my best mates in the world is a guy called Robin uh, and I was looking to live with Robin for two years, uh, the last two years of my degree. And Robin was a real prayer warrior. I wonder if you've ever met anybody who's like that before. Whenever something was going on with uh, our Christian union on campus, or um, it was in our personal lives, in our house, Robin would sit there and would listen, but then he'd say, hey, let's pray. I remember sitting in my, in my lounge in my front room on the sofa with Robin and praying um, on many, many occasions. Robin also ran uh, two prayer meetings a week. I remember he'd do Monday morning and Friday afternoon. And then we had our chaplaincy centre and we'd go in there to a little room off the side, a group of us, and we'd sit there and we'd pray for the students of UEA to come to know Jesus. And they did. And then not just in the time that we were there, but actually from the time that we then left as well, Students have still been coming to know Jesus, and I believe that one of the reasons for that is because of the group that Robin led to meet and to pray for revival on that campus with students to come and know Jesus twice a week. Could that be you? Could you set something like that up? Could you lead just even a small group of mates to meet together to open the Bible and to pray 
for the students around you. Another legacy you could leave behind is a justice legacy. I've got a friend called Zoe who introduced me to so many injustices in the world that I'd never come across before. And that was the way that she chose to live her life. It was the things that she chose to consume. She loved a charity shop. She rejected high street fashion. She would shop on the market. If there was any waste food, you better believe that wasn't going in the bin with Zoe. I've had more than one meal made up from just stuff in Zoe's fridge that she's thrown in a pan together to avoid having any waste left behind. So we studied a course called International Development, which meant that she spent all of her time thinking about stuff like aid to countries and humanitarian relief. And the way that she then carried her own ideas of what godly justice looked like meant that she was a real firebrand on that course. People knew her as someone who believed passionately in justice, but not just because for the sake of justice itself, maybe, but because she read in the Bible, Hosea 12, 6, maintain love and justice and wait for your God always. She hadn't decided it within herself. She'd seen it in the Bible. She'd seen it in the life of Jesus, and she realized that this is the way to live. And for people like me who hadn't really come across much of this stuff before, knowing someone like Zoe all of a sudden meant all these things about injustice in the world were put right in front of you. Could you live out a life that proclaims justice as something which is of God's heart? The final legacy I want to talk to you about is a loving legacy. Now that might sound kind of similar to the first one that we talked about, our serving legacy with Jacinta, but there's a very uh, good reason for why a loving legacy could be considered different. So I had a mate called Tom at university, and Tom realised the best thing that he could do to love the students around him was to tell them about Jesus, what he'd done, and how he could change their lives. And it meant that Tom intentionally and deliberately chose to spend his time in places that might have been different to a whole like, other load of us in our friendship group. So you'd be amazed at how quickly you can be enclosed by things like church and Christian union and all your other Christian mates. And you can put yourself in what we call the Christian bubble. Tom was saying, that won't be me. Tom was captain of the table tennis team. Tom lived in a house with people who weren't Christians. Tom went out of his way to spend more time with people who didn't know Jesus than did. And he inspired and encouraged and challenged me to do the same as well. Could that be you? Could you be someone who stays grounded in their faith, but is focused on living out the truth that you have in Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says this, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. Can you be that person who God makes his appeal through? Tom was, and he left an extraordinary legacy behind as a result. This is the tip of the iceberg, guys. I've mentioned just four legacies there. Serving, prayer, justice, loving but there'll be so many more that you could leave behind at university. Take time now to think about what those legacies could be. And remember to pray and to ask God to show you what it is that he wants you to leave behind on campus.